What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. JP Dividends here bringing you guys another video and today I'm going to be talking about my dividend growth strategy for this year and why I think this could be a great move long term for myself as well as other dividend growth investors. So in this video we're going to go over a few different things. We're going to start out by looking at my ideal portfolio allocation. Then I'm going to briefly discuss the balance between capital appreciation, dividend yield, and dividend growth. Then I'm going to talk about why this works and finally I'll talk about different variations of this that you could do if you wanted to switch it up a little bit. So what does an ideal dividend portfolio look like to you? Comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you enjoy this video, drop a like down below and hit the subscribe button for more content like this. So my ideal portfolio allocation that I've discussed a little bit on this channel, but I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more in depth about is having 50% VU, 30% SCHD and 20% individual stock. I love the strategy because I feel like with the portfolio that is set up with an emphasis on total returns and dividend growth can create a massive snowball of money long term. With VU, you got half your portfolio riding with the market. So if the market has a good year, then you know at least half of your money is going to be matching that. And then you got SCHD, which I know has been kind of weak the past few years on capital appreciation but long term you should get some pretty solid capital appreciation there. You get a good yield around 3% or so, plus that dividend CAGR is in the double digits, so long term this thing could be a total beast for that snowball effect. And then the reason the last 20% is for individual stocks is because I really like to focus on finding high quality businesses that have great financials, a huge moat that makes them hard to beat, and really good dividend statistics so that I can get a really high yield on cost over time. I like researching stocks and trying to be very picky about what companies I own because I think long term you want to own really high quality businesses so I do like saving the last 20% of my portfolio for that. And then when talking about the balance of capital appreciation versus dividend growth versus dividend yield, I feel like this portfolio primarily focuses on capital appreciation and dividend growth because I know that long term VU and SCHD are making up 80% of the portfolio, which I'll get hopefully some solid capital appreciation there. I would ideally like to get between 7 to 10% a year on average, and I can see my yield being somewhere between 2 to 3% long term like it is right now, hopefully having an 8 to 10% dividend growth rate. And that's one of the biggest challenges a lot of dividend investors face is the trade-off of capital appreciation versus dividend yield versus dividend growth. It feels like you can't have all three because a lot of high-yielding stocks have lower dividend growth or some of the high yielders have zero stock price appreciation, or even some of them have negative stock price appreciation. So it feels like you can't get all three. So for me, I'm definitely focused on that capital appreciation and the dividend growth. It's kind of like that saying where it's like you have time, energy, and money. And when you're younger, you have a ton of energy and a ton of time, but you have no money. When you're in your kind of, you know, your middle years, your working years, you have money and energy, but you don't have time. And then when you retire, you have time and money, but no energy. It feels exactly like that scenario, kind of like the triangle there. So that's definitely the way I lean is on capital appreciation and dividend growth. Because for me, I'm not looking to retire in the next, you know, five to 10 years. I am looking to retire early, but ideally I would like to get as much growth as possible to try to make that happen. So here's why I believe this portfolio works well over a long period of time, because you still get capital appreciation with a decent dividend. I know it's not huge. It's not 5%. It's not 7% but it's still a decent dividend, typically between two to 3%, and that is gonna depend on what stocks you own individually, but for me, I do have a really good dividend growth rate, which I love. One thing I can also imagine is that in retirement, you could use SCHD and VU interchangeably to rely on money. For example, one big risk when it comes to retiring for most people is something called sequence of return risk. All this means is that if you're retiring with a portfolio of $2 million, and let's say it's all in VU or the S&P 500, and you have a market correction early on, then your money will not last as long in retirement, which that could be a nightmare scenario. I mean, imagine retiring at age 60 and thinking, hey, this is going to last me 25 to 30 years, and instead it only lasts you 18 years. Then what, at age 78, you're going to have to go back to work? You know what I mean? So that's why you want to be aware of that sequence of return risk. And I feel like if I have a lot of money in VU and SCHD, and if the market has a bad year, then maybe for that year, I could just live off my dividends and not withdraw as much from my VU position. Or maybe the market is having a pretty good year and I could maybe focus a little bit more on my VU position and wouldn't have to live off of as much as my dividends. So the reason I like this is it feels like you can kind of pull different levers 
and choose between whether you want to live off dividends or sell a little bit of stocks, which I do think is a really good option to have. And then jumping into some other variations of this portfolio that I've seen people do is 80% VU and 20% SCHD. Now I think this is an absolute beast of a portfolio. It's super low maintenance, takes zero effort, and you're mainly going to get capital appreciation with a little bit of dividend growth on the side, which is awesome. And I think this is just like a lazy man's dividend growth portfolio, which does work really well. I really like that strategy. Or if you want to switch it up and you don't like SCHD, you could always do 80% VU and 20% stocks. I've seen that as well. And I don't know if I would ever go with majority SCHD unless if I was super close to retirement and wanted more cash flow. But if you're in that position, then well, that makes sense. And also I know that I could go 100% VU and call it a day, but I personally think at that point for me, I would just get too bored of investing and would probably resort to mainly focusing on real estate and rental properties because I love that cash flow but I don't want the hassle of the rental properties and all the hands-on stuff that comes with it. So that's why we're dividend growth investors because we love that long-term cash flow that is extremely passive. So that is my dividend growth investing strategy for this year. And I think we'll stick with it for the long term if we really like it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like down below, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.